In graph theory, a tree is just a graph with no cycles, so you never loop back on yourself. Trees are important, of course, in many real-world applications. Think about neuron structure in the brain. Think about uh, decision trees and binary search trees. Even your good old-fashioned family tree. If you count the number of different trees that can be made from n vertices, where each vertex is different, it turns out to be n to the power of n minus 2. But why is that the case? It even works for a tree with one vertex. There's only one of these, and 1 to the power of negative 1 is 1. With two vertices, we get 2 to the power of 0. Again, that's only 1. Three vertices, 3 to the power of 1, there's three different trees. The vertices are labelled, so these two are different trees, for example. By the time we get to four vertices, there's four to the power of two or 16 different trees. But why is that the case? You might think four times four, well, yeah, I can break these 16 into four groups of four, but how would that work for five to the power of three or six to the power of four? Let's take the six to the power of four example and investigate a little bit. So, 6 to the power of 4 is 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. That would mean that we had 6 options for 4 consecutive choices. But what are those 4 consecutive choices and why are there 6 of them? And this is where the proof of sequence comes in. A proof of sequence is a clever way to encode a tree, any tree, into a sequence of length n minus 2 where each number can take any of the values from 1 to n. So, some examples are shown here. This tree has proof of sequence 1, 1, 1, 1. This tree has proof of sequence 4, 3, 2, 1. And this one, 6, 6, 3, 1. So, because there's four numbers in the sequence and each one has six choices, there would in fact be uh, 6 to the power of 4 of these sequences. And in general, there would be n to the power of n minus 2 for any value of n. But it's not clear why there's exactly one proof of sequence for each tree and vice versa. There's actually a surprisingly simple algorithm to go from tree to proof of sequence, and we use this example, this tree with proof of sequence 6631, to demonstrate it. Basically, the idea will be to just continually remove each of the leaves of the tree in ascending order and write down the vertices that they were connected to. A leaf means just a vertex with degree 1, so in our example, the smallest leaf would be 2. So we start by removing that and writing down the vertex it's connected to. Of course, there's only one of these and that is six. Then the next smallest leaf is four. So we remove that and the vertex it's connected to again is six. So we write down six again. Removing the four, the next smallest leaf is five. It was connected to three. So we add three to our proof of sequence. Finally, three is the next smallest leaf and it was connected to one, giving us the final proof of sequence, six, six, three, one, as expected. Here's the algorithm written out more precisely, but essentially what it's doing is removing each leaf from smallest to largest and writing down their neighbours. Now, if we do look at the algorithm carefully, the key point about it is that there's only one choice at each step. At each step, the vertex with degree 1 with the smallest label must be unique, and the neighbour of this vertex must be unique because it was a leaf, it was a vertex with degree 1. This uniqueness means that the function mapping trees to proof and sequence is injective, meaning that no two trees output the same proof of sequence. All we need to do now is go the other way and prove that every proof of sequence also maps to a unique tree, and that would be enough to prove that the number of proof of sequences is exactly equal to the number of labelled trees. The algorithm to build a tree from a sequence is essentially the reverse of what we did before, but it seems a little bit more complicated as we need to output a tree rather than just a list of numbers. So here's the pseudocode algorithm. What we're going to do is let the proof in sequence be P, and we're going to create an ordered list of the vertices 1 to n. While the number of vertices is less than n minus 2, we're going to call x the smallest label in L that is not in P. Let y be the first label in P, and add a vertex at an edge between vertices x and y. Let's show an example again, and we'll use the proof of sequence 6631, so we should end up with what we started with, the tree from before. So first step, we need our list L, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. X should be the smallest label in L that's not in P. In this case, 1 is in P, so X would be 2. Y would be the first element of P, and that's 6. So we're going to join edges 2 and 6 in our tree. Then we remove those x and y, and again, look for the smallest number in L, that's not in P, now that's going to be 4. 
So then we join four and six to create another edge in our tree. Going again, we join five and three, then we join three and one. And at this stage, we only have two numbers left in L. We join these with an edge uh, that is one and six, and that gives us our tree. This is the tree that corresponds to our previous sequence, and it is the tree which we started with. Again, the key about this is that that tree is unique because there's only one choice at each step. There must be a unique X, which is the smallest label in L, and there must be a unique Y, which is the first label in P. Therefore, every proof of sequence maps to a unique tree. Uh, therefore, the number of labeled trees and the number of proof of sequences must be equal, which is n to the power of n minus 2. Now, there are other ways to prove this formula, but I think this is a pretty nice one. And well done to Mr. Proofer for coming up with this way back in 1918.